Well, hello friends. Today we are going to work a little bit more on the HTML stuff. So what I have in mind today is implementing inline style attributes. And I'll show you what I mean by that by making a little test file that we are then going to work with. So let me just make one. We'll call it uh, i. Dot... Let me just call it i. Maybe it's easy to type. Or actually, you know what? Let's not be lazy. Okay, and then we'll make ourselves a little thing, nothing too fancy. And here we'll put a div that says style equal uh, about color red. This should be red. Mm, what else could we do? Maybe background color? Green color white. Uh, bold. This should be bold white on green. <laughs> Alright, so let's just verify that I didn't totally screw that up by checking in Firefox. Okay, so we should end up with something like this. Now the thing is, <clears throat> in libhtml lib and serenity, we don't support the style attribute at all. So we're gonna have to implement that. So, but just for funsies, let's see what this would look like right now. If we just bring it up. Oh. Oh, crap. The directory named HTML is screwing me up all the time. So, let me take care of that right away. Test. Yeah, something like that. Because, yeah, it takes precedence because um, I have a command name in HTML and this directory called HTML and then the directory takes precedence. It's irritating and I, I don't want to work on fixing that right now. So just renaming the directory. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, we already do the bold, right? But we don't respect the inline style attribute. So, the way that this works in um, HTML is that the style attribute um, is um, basically a string that contains a CSS declaration. So you can have any number of properties with values and we just have to parse that and include that when we um, determine the style of that element. So I'll show you how we determine the style right now. So <clears throat> we have this thing called resolve style. So when we create the layout node for a DOM node, um, this is this is how it works right now. This, uh, this I can tell that I'm going to be changing a lot of this uh, over time, but but this is where we are right now. So um, when you create a layout node for a given DOM node, uh, and it's not a document, but it's an element, then uh, we call the style resolver to resolve the style for this element. And by that, um, what we do is we figure out like what are the actual effective CSS properties that we need to apply um, to this element. So if we go here, then um, here's this very hacked up inheritance. Um, but then what we do is uh, we collect all of the matching rules in all of our style sheets that we know about and um, then we iterate over the declarations uh, in each rule and uh, apply those properties to the outgoing style properties object. So here, we basically should just need to include, if the element has a style attribute, then we need to also um, do the same thing here. We need to take the properties from that declaration and, and set them on the style properties. Okay. So declarations, let's see how this works. Right. Okay. 
So let's see how we do this. So we already have the element. So we need to ask here if the element has some inline style. If element inline style. Um, then we will oh, phone is buzzing here. Uh, then we will take apply the inline style as well. So wait, do I have my terminology all messed up here? I haven't looked at this for a while. Style CSS style declaration. It's a declaration block. Oh, so this is actually a bit screwy. Because a declaration has a number of properties, and then these are properties. So a rule um, a rule doesn't have multiple declarations. It should just have a single declaration. Oh, the object model here is all wrong. Let's fix it. So the star rule should only have a single declaration. Uh, and let's fix that. So we didn't make any code changes yet, other than me moving that directory. So OK, let's fix the object model. So the style rule should have a single declaration. And then style declaration should have like um, a vector of style properties or something like that, or um, property value pairs. OK, so let's see, style rule. Cause, <laughs> I, I could just tell that something was off about this because I wanted to grab the inline style declaration, but then there were many declarations and, and my, my browser sense was tingling like this isn't right. So I guess I, I messed it up when I was implementing this. I wrote, wrote a lot of this code on the train a while back. Um, I was trying to keep busy while commuting before I discovered the power of commute talking. Uh, anyways, okay, let's see. Style declaration should have a these. Maybe we can just call these um, proper property value, property name and value, I'm we'll calling. Okay, and then put these in here. Value. Okay, and for these we should expose some kind of. In these we can actually just do this way, and then. Do an iterator helper for each property callback callback oh. for auto property in maybe we can call this property actually maybe this. So I think this is good for each property and properties. Okay, property. No, 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 no. Callback. Property name. Property value. Okay. That makes more sense. And then here we should just have a single declaration. So this will be a um, ref putter to, or no, a non null ref putter to a style declaration. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Now a style rule has a um, set of selectors and a declaration. If you know web platform stuff, then that should make sense to you too, I would hope. 
for each declaration. There's no such thing, my friend. Um, where are we using that? Oh, we were not using that. Okay, well, that's good. Declarations. So that's stupid. We should just have a style declaration. Okay. And it will take a nominal ref putter to a style declaration. Okay. And then I guess we gotta fix the CSS parser now. So style rule create. Um, so instead of grabbing the current rule declarations, this should really be a um, list of style properties, really, properties, and then we'll make a declaration out of them. So let's see, current rule properties, append style property create. Maybe this can just be like this, actually. We don't need anything fancy for this right now. Declarations, blah, blah, blah. And here we'll say style declaration create. Mm, move current rule. Oh. Did you hang? Did everything hang? No? Okay. Wait, what the heck is my computer doing? Just OBS? Alright, well. Uh, computer hung a little bit there. I don't know if it was still recording properly, but we're back. Okay, I think that's good. And you don't like that because missing a paren. And then we forgot something a little bit further up here with this interface. All oh, right, it's not public. So let's just make this public right now. And we'll put it up here and we'll rename it to style property. And it can be like that for now. I think that's okay for each property, blah, blah, blah. And style declaration, when we create one, then we just want a non-null ref putter vector to, oh, no, 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 we actually, what we want is just a vector of style properties. Properties. Oh, let's move that, actually. Okay, and here we'll just vector style property properties. Okay, so we're almost back on track. And let's see if we can build this. Wait, why did that not work? Make loop HTML and and. Style rule. What did we forget here? Style rule should get a non null ref footer to a style declaration. Not many. Just like this. There we go, and then in style resolver, we now have to iterate a little bit differently. So we just want to iterate over the um, properties. Maybe we can do it like this, actually, and we don't need any helper for it. Um, Property.name and property.value. Get rid of that for the time being and then just fix this up. Style declaration. Uh, we'll just expose the vector. Expose the vector style property properties in const. 
Okay. And no, no, too many. Right. Da -da 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 -da. And what are we forgetting? And CSS parser. Extraneous paren. Now, tell me about it. Oh, hold on. No viable conversion for... Oh. Yeah, they're not ref counted anymore, so that makes sense. Dogs, P, 126. Declaration dot properties. Okay. This will be nice. Property value to string characters. I'll do that instead. Okay. Okay, I think hopefully we're done with this little detour and we can get back to um, implementing inline style activity. That works, and let's test something a little bit trickier. Uh, CSS file, it's fine. And what about small HTML? I'm just verifying that I didn't screw everything up. Yeah, okay, we're still good. Um, so let's add those changes. Live HTML. Uh, fix incorrect CSS object model. A style rule as n selector as as a style declaration which has style properties. Uh, many style property objects. Style property. Sounds a bit funny, but yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So now we can actually go and give element uh, an inline style attribute, or um, and an inline style declaration for that matter. So we'll do a style declaration thing here. Say const style declaration inline style const and return an inline style. And we'll just put one here, like a ref putter to style declaration. So by default, this will just be nothing. But if we encounter a style attribute, then we'll parse it. Actually, we don't even need to cache it here. We could do it in the resolver just as a simple first version, like obviously if you were um, going for good performance, you would need to cache this because you don't want to be parsing the CSS every time that you do style resolution. But in our case, we can just do it the simple way for now. So we'll say if element um, attribute, let's see, auto style attribute element attribute style if style attribute is null not null then hmm, we're going to need a CSS parser here okay parse CSS um, but I want to parse a declaration because here I can only parse um, a whole style sheet. I don't want that. I want to parse a declaration. So let me parse CSS declaration. Let's try this. And then parse declaration. Hmm. It's all one big machine here. Uh, we're going to have to refactor this a little bit to allow us to parse an individual declaration. Um, 
so let's see. Let's make sure everything else is where it should be. So here we want to do like auto declaration is parse CSS declaration. Um, style attribute. We'll say if declaration declaration. No. Um, how do we do this? Uh, for auto property in declaration style properties set property. Um, property dot name property value. Oh, I see. We were using for each property up here. Um, oh, but that's another thing. Oh, okay. That's a different class. Don't worry about that. Style properties. Hmm. Some bit of a clash there with the style property thing. Anyways, let's not worry too much about that. So I can't iterate over the declaration that easily. I need to actually get his properties vector. There we go. Okay, so I think we're good if we can just learn how to actually parse the declaration. So, hmm. So right now everything lives in this function here. So we should probably make an object out of this. Just do a simple CSS parser class. And I guess these are the members. Uh, I'll just take all this state here. And maybe make it private. And then let's see. And all of these are functions. Wow, I really wrote this in a weird way. This, this could just be a class. I don't know why I ended up writing it that way. Char peak. Quite funny. Um, what's the CSS thing? Oh, that's the um, input string. Okay, so let's say um, CSS parser, parser, CSS. Okay, and then we take um, string view, input, in, input. Oh, we're gonna just call it CSS for now, actually. And then we can fix that up later. String CSS, just for simplicity. Okay, let's just convert all of this stuff to class member functions, consume specific. Okay, just uh, come with me, all of you. Okay. Well, this is kind of an interesting problem here. Um, I, I don't think that the IDE could help me with this, although that would be really cool if it could. This is um, kind of a weird mechanical conversion. Wait, do I bool parse declaration? No, 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 no. What am I returning here? Oh, nothing. Okay, okay. It's fine. So this thing doesn't do any error checking, as you might have realized if you're reading some of the code. Um, it will just choke dramatically on invalid CSS or CSS that it does not like. So room for improvement, you could say. Anyways, we have now almost converted the entire thing. Our selector list. Oh, I guess there was a little bit more than I thought. Uh, char. Da -da 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 -da. Void. And what are you, friend? Bool. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Maybe you should be const also. Hello. Let's see. Peak can be const. Or selector, blah, 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 blah. This is clearly const. Maybe they should even be outside the class. Who knows? Hmm. 
doesn't really matter right now. We'll just um, go here and we'll say um, parser parse sheet. Um, and we'll do return, and then this will become parse sheet. So let's see, no, no, ref putter style sheet, parse sheet. That's pretty cool. And then we can also do a declaration. So this is declaration. Um, first declarations. Oh, this is all badly named here. So this should be parse declaration, and then this should be parse declaration, and this should be parse property, and this is parse property. Okay. And then what we want to do is this, essentially. Um, so this will be a non-null ref cutter style declaration. First standalone declaration, let's say. Um, and where do we actually create a style declaration? Create. It's here, we do this. Okay, so instead of parsing a whole rule, here we'll just very easily or simply do, um, we'll consume the white space and then um, parse declaration and consume well we don't need to consume white space after that now we have everything ready so we should be able to do that i think that'll make sense so like this is just for ignoring any like white space before the declaration happens um all right let's see if this works oh i forgot to rename the Standalone thing. Okay, that did not work. Well, actually, I should have checked if anything works after we refactor the frickin' CSS parser. Uh, let's um, HTML test, right? That's good. All right. So what were we screwing up on? I should have kept it. Should have kept the lar. What were we screwing up on here? Uh, da, 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 da. We are in resolve style. Parse CSS declaration. Parse declaration. Parse property. Consume one, and then we die because we are past the end of string. In parse property. All right. All right. So that's interesting. So what the heck did I put in those declarations anyway? I already forgot. Color red. Oh, there's no um, semicolon. I guess, I wonder if it gets mad about that. I wonder if we fix that. Nope, still don't like it. All right, all right. So what were you so upset about? Still that, parse property, parse stuff. Bada bum 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 bum. Parse property. Um. Oh, so it's looking for this, and it, unless it gets to this, it doesn't leave. So we're gonna also need to allow um, exiting if we find um, the end of the document. 
So we should probably implement this ourselves instead of using parse declaration. So we'll do this for standalone. And we'll do this, and then we'll say if peak is, um, or wait, how do we know if we're at the end? Do we have something for that? Um, oh, if peak returns zero, right. So if peak, then we die. Okay. First property, how does that work? Consume specific, this guy. Mm. Okay, so some progress here, but still doesn't look right. But we at least we survived for a moment. So let's see what we come up with here. Declaration. Um, do we have anything interesting in here? We'll just print it out as a pointer first, see how that goes. And oh well, actually, let's, let's do this also. So, um, property that name is equal property value. Okay, all right. We got proper names and property values. So it looks like this is actually pretty good, but then why don't we render this correctly, I wonder? Hmm. Well, we are going to have to look at the layout tree. So let's define HTML debug so that we can get a layout tree. It will just show up in the terminal. And then we'll see what it looks like from the rendering code's perspective. All right, that's a little bit uh, too small there. And let's do this. All right, so. Mm. Oh, frick. Um, <laughs> we don't support color names. Uh, that's the problem. <laughs> I just realized. We're going to have to type in the color names like this right now. <laughs> uh, zero, zero. I thought zero, zero. Okay, and then this one will do. <laughs> that's a silly issue. But yeah, I, I just remembered that um, I had the same issue the other day that I was trying to make something and testing with color and then um, I realized that we don't actually support parsing colors by name. So check it out. We are red and bold white on green. How neat is that? Seriously. We got freaking inline style working. So cool. Hmm. Of course, the, um, the way that these things are spaced doesn't look quite right, but uh, yeah, they probably shouldn't be so far apart. But we don't have to fix everything right now. Um, that's just a default style for development, I think. We should probably do something more like this. Anyways, this was about inline style, and we've actually made that. So let's see what we can commit here. Da -da 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 -da. The HTML. And oh, I just want to look at these. Let's undef that. And let's not be so wordy here. Uh, I guess we can write this this way. Kind of nasty here, but it's okay. Nasty, nasty. Um. 
Okay, and then the big change, of course, here is changing the um, CSS parser. So let's do that separately. Um, CSS parser. Commit. HTML. Um, factor the CSS parser into a class. And uh, implement declaration in that part um, allow declaration parsing uh, also added a st um, parser function for standalone style declarations uh, okay cool and then css style resolver cache so we just look up the style attribute by name. If we find one, then we parse it uh, as a CSS declaration. If that succeeds, we iterate over all the properties and copy them into the elements result style. Very, very simple, but effective. Obviously, this is not 100% correct according to the CSS specification, but it's good enough for us right now. Um, implement basic um, support for um, inline style attributes. Okay, now style elements. Um, da -da -da -da, apply uh, style, style elements with inline styles. Okay, style color. This is red. This is red. <laughs> yeah. Pretty neat. Mm. Okay. So. Yeah. There we go. I guess let's uh, let's let's see that one more time. How neat is that? Let's add something more to it. Let's make a, one more of these. Say background color red and uh, blue. And the color is going to be, I don't know, white maybe? And ooh, let's do some padding. See what happens. Just 10. Um, this one is also here. Uh, I wonder how that will go. Oh shit, did I not close the previous tag? Hmm. Okay. Did I mess that up with the padding maybe? I'm not even sure what's going wrong here. Oh, no, 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 frick, I'm not closing the <laughs> the B tag here. Oh, that's what's going on. Yeah, the HTML parser does not know what to do if you forget to close a tag. Um, so I'm going to put the padding back. Oops. Uh, that's something that's going to have to be implemented at some point by someone. That is more like it. Um, Seems like maybe we're not smart enough to um, render the padding correctly, but yeah, oh, I wasn't really sure that that was going to work anyway. Oh, no such thing as FG here. Uh, anyways, we got the colors working. That's what I wanted to work. So actually, wait, hold on. Let me try if I specify these. Let's say 30. I think maybe they do work, just that, just that I, I didn't add the shorthand for setting all paddings at the same time. So, but if we do that, I'm still still hoping here. Oh, look at that! It's actually padded, but we're not drawing the background correctly for padded. Well, that's a whole other problem that I'm not going to deal with right now, because this was about inline styles, and they are implemented, they clearly work, the engine clearly needs um, more work, but it's pretty cool making progress. So I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out while 
going to do something a little bit different, um, but still I'm working on Serenity, whatever it is that Serenity is becoming. So <laughs> thanks for hanging out, and I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Bye.